Chrissy, thanks for that very nice introduction, and uh, good morning, everybody. Um, as I'm, I'm a geologist, and uh, I suppose I've been working here in Australia for the last 12, 13 years, and throughout that time, I've just seen so many changes in, in our industry, and not, not just how we collect data as geologists, but how we analyze it and how we look ahead uh, to see how the data that we're collecting can be um, you know, pushed into mine planning, et cetera. So that, that'll be probably the general theme of, of my talk today. Um, just to give a brief outline, I, I do want to you know, have a look at mineral systems and briefly. I promise not to bore you. I won't get too technical. Um, and also, the, I suppose, how important um, these days, the understanding and getting your head around mineralogy, the mineralogy of, of an ore deposit is getting quite important in understanding that at an early stage. Um, and also just looking at maybe the definition of, a, of an ore body, um, you know, is, is, have you got something that's economic that you can develop and, and make some profit out of? Um, and then finally, uh, as Chrissy mentioned, we'll just, I'd like to touch on geometallurgy and where, uh, where this, um, I suppose, I wouldn't call it a new science, but it's pretty recent over the last couple of decades, this word has uh, come onto the uh, re resource and mine development map. Um, some very, very simple explanations to, to kick it off. I mean, to me, an ore body is an economic term, and a mineral deposit is a geological one. Um, there's there really no deposit consists entirely of just a, a single ore mineral, like for copper, you might have chalcopyrite, but you know it's going to be mixed up with many, many other different minerals. Um, and these are the things that we go looking for and prize when we're out there exploring. Um, and really a mineral deposit that's sufficiently rich um, to be worked at a profit. Uh, you know, somebody want to make money out of this at the end of the day, including you guys and gals out there. Um, that's an ore body. Interestingly, um, I just want to draw your attention to, I suppose, two other factors which determine whether a, a mineral is suitable to be economic um, or called an ore mineral is, is basically, it, it, can it be released from the gang material, which is the waste material uh, that's normally produced uh, during a mining operation. And if you have difficulty in doing that, either through the crushing or concentrating process uh, in, on a mine site, um, or even at the smelting stage, well, basically you're in trouble. Um, just to focus people in on the different phases that, you know, it's not all just about exploration when you're looking at a mining project or uh, bringing your deposit uh, to, a, to an ore body stage. Um, there's a lot of really important studies that have to be carried out. After exploration, if you found something that you think is of value, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do a little quick concept study on it. Um, we might even push harder into the scoping study phase, which we start to put some um, major operational identification, you know, is this going to be an open mine? Is it going to be an underground um, um, mine? How are we going to transport what we're mining to port? We start considering these things. And as we push closer to defining an ore body, um, we start looking at some real feasibility studies, pre-feasibility, um, feasibility and then getting close to operations when we want to go to the market and our, our bank managers for lots of cash, we're looking at definitive feasibility studies. Um, and really where I want to focus um, this morning is looking at this phase one, this exploration, the type of data that we're bringing in that we can push right through um, uh, to, to add value to the project at the different scoping phases. Um, one thing I'll go back to, Chrissy mentioned, um, We've, we've found all the easy stuff around the world, so we think. Um, there is some solid data out there to you know, back it up, and, and I'm just looking at some of the stuff that's been put out by S&P Global, um, an analytical group, um, that really, if you, if you just take gold, for instance, and you look at the amount of money in the past, um, back to, say, to 1990, that's been put into exploring and the discoveries that flowed from that, you can see there was a pretty good success rate and um, up till around maybe 2010, 2011, you can see lots and lots of cash being spent on exploration, but suddenly, uh, or maybe not so suddenly, but over the last 10 years, the discovery rates have really, really dropped off. And I'm talking about serious discovery stuff that's about uh, a million ounces inside. So 
I suppose with, with that, we're asking why, you know, and, and, and it, I think we're all coming to the conclusion that a lot of the stuff in the 90s and early 2000s that was being found was close to the surface. Um, it, it was easier to find, but now as we, um, I suppose, start to work through these resources, these reserves that are out there, um, there's less and less of them, and um, we've got to try harder to find them. I think that's the message. Um, in any um, mineral deposit exploration stage, you know, there's, we, we always start, um, most of the explorers out there start with a broad brush. Uh, sometimes they're lucky enough to have ground that's just either they've bought into or, or had, a, had a bit of success in, in claiming it at an early stage. But generally, most people that come to us and work with us, they're, they're, they've got a broad brush. They're looking for gold in Australia or Africa, and they want to tie down and focus maybe on where that could be found. So there is quite a, a, an analytical process that we go through to start to, um, I suppose, hone in and focus on locations that we might be able to find, for instance, gold or copper deposits. Um, just quickly, and without going into any great detail, um, the concept of a mineral system, and I think you're as an audience out there today and over the next few few days, you're probably going to hear a lot bit more about mineral systems. And, and it's just looking at where does your deposit come from? I mean, it's hard to believe that there are very, very deep crustal processes out there that, that, that are happening a couple of kilometers underneath us that are like an engine driving our world. But they're also driving mineral deposits. And there's, there's new stuff being formed as, as we sit here. Um, and a lot of the, the minerals um, we call it gold, copper, whatever, uh, that we look for were actually originated fairly deep at some stage in time, and they've gradually been brought to the surface, or the surface has uh, come to us geologically over many, many millions, billions of years. I won't go into that in depth, but let's just say that mineral systems, um, because we're, we're dealing with so many earth processes, um, you know, Com are, are a combination of many different geological factors. Um, and to use that um, fact that we, there's lots of data out there, we're using geophysics, we're using geochemistry, we're, 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 we're using mineralogy, um, I suppose we, we, we're trying to use all this data now to predict where maybe the next big deposit might be. And a mineral systems approach, really, it's just about getting your hands on as much data as you can and then come up with a, a fairly clever and interesting way of, of, of dealing with it to lead you to where you think the, the next mineral deposit might lie. Um, and we're using integrated geoscience. You know, we're, we're bringing the geophysicists together. We're bringing the geologists into the one room. We're, we're, we're bringing our, 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 especially our geochemists, um, into, the, into the mix as well and getting them to, to sit down in teams uh, to look at all the data that's becoming available. Um, and no more than here in Queensland, there's, there's, there's lots of new geophysical data being published, and, and we're, we're all taking a lot of extra time now to trawl through this and, and come up with some targets. Um, just to go back to, I mentioned definitive feasibility studies area um, earlier, and that, that's a, a kind of a, a study that we carry out, as I said, to develop an ore body. Um, and there's so much information that, that goes into that. You know, you've got your geology models, your mining methods, your processing methods, environmental management plans, you look at your forecast for capex and opex and, and all the marketing that goes on as well. But, you know, that's almost like a mineral system. It's lots and lots of data that's got to be analyzed. And, and we're saying to people at this stage, you know, wh why would you go out there and start exploring any more without actually having your head around what mineral systems you're dealing with. You know. So really, uh, what I'm trying to say simply is that the, all the mineral systems that we're looking at, they're all process driven. There's many different aspects to it. Um, you know, we're, we're looking at regional scale structures like big faults in the crust that uh, may lead to the, the, the fluid movements that might lead to where you could find a deposit. Um, we're looking for granites that might be the source of fluids that could be deposited uh, close to falls or in, in porphyry systems. Um, so we're not just looking at, at one particular area, we're bringing all this together. So it's actually a, a process and a, and a collation of data. Um, and we try to understand these things subjectively. We, we don't get passionate about where we think something might be. Uh, we use the science and we, I'll go through some of the inputs in a moment. Um, just generally going back to what I mentioned about earlier on feasibility studies, well, 
you know, if, if you're looking here um, at, at this stage of the game, which is, is where a lot of <clears throat> maybe some of the junior exploration companies that are here today are, uh, they're out there, they're exploring. They're, it's, it's very early stage stuff, but I'd like to focus here on, on the data collection side. And what, what we're finding that this is an absolutely critical stage um, when it comes to uh, not just developing uh, the minerals system study, but also the, the type of data that was collected, say, 20, 30 years ago, um, is, it was minimal compared to what's available to us today. So it's, it's really at, at this stage that our guys and a lot of our specialist geologists and CSA are coming into the game, um, reanalyzing what's happening here and coming up with some more information for uh, clients, a lot of them the junior explorers that are, that are here in the room. Um, and what we're finding is that the, the old methods that, as, as geologists that we had, um, we, we, we found something of what we thought was of value. We'd, we'd drill it out. Um, we'd sample it at various stages. Uh, we'd send it off to the lab. And we'd, we'd probably just analyze or tell the lab to analyze for maybe, maybe 10 elements, be it gold, silica, iron, some of the things we thought we'd be interested in finding out what is in the deposit. Uh, these days, we're, we're now asking for so much more because we're, we're finding that we need to understand not just the elements that, that are there, okay, we found gold, we found copper, but what minerals are these things occurring in? So th the inputs to, uh, I suppose, looking at these in more detail, um, it's a fairly long list, um, but this is what our geologists are looking for. They're trying to keep their minds open because just because we might have found what we think is a deposit. Um, there might be other stuff around there worth uh, considering before we go spending our clients' money. Um, also, really using all the observational geology uh, that we can get our hands on. Um, looking at geochemistry, and this is becoming more and more important in, in exploration. Um, and also what's called calculated mineralogy. And the, there is many, many new ways now of calculating what the mineralogy of a deposit is just using assays uh, that are coming from labs. Um, and there are some quite clever people out there that can do that for you at the moment. Um, the mineralogy, I won't go into that in any great detail. It's just, it is quite important. We bring a course geophysics into the equation. Um, also looking at, you know, how the data has been captured if we're doing drill holes, data logging, all that stuff is, is quite important to bring that into the mix. Um, data management, it's, it's the, probably the most powerful and most valuable thing that an explorer has uh, is the data that they collect, and that's actually the, the real value of their project. And finally, um, you know, we spend a lot of time developing 3D models of, of what we're looking at, and there's some ph phenomenal software out there at the moment to, to build up a, a picture of what we're looking at. Um, I might just focus on the geochemistry stuff for the moment, because it's starting to yield lots and lots of success, and I just want to um, thank Hot Chile for giving us permission to um, use some slides from work that, that was done about six or seven years ago over on their Productora project in, um, in Chile. Um, basically, uh, when, when they were drilling this out, there was a lot of questions as to what type of mineral system was, was, was at play here. Many people <laughs> thought it might have been an IOCG type deposit. Um, other people had ideas that it was hydrothermal, a porphyry system. But because the guys in Hot Chile were clever enough at the very, very early stage to run as much analytical, um, I suppose, testing, and at the lab they, they, they put through as many assays as they could and tested as many of the elements as they could, they were able to use uh, the quantitative mineralogy techniques uh, to come up with a, a picture of what the deposit looked like uh, with respect to the mineralogy. And it just wasn't a series of drill holes showing you where the copper was or where the gold was. They actually were able to predict um, the, the mineralogy of the deposit, um, show where things were changing. And it actually led to, um, on top of all that, it led to another discovery uh, because they were able to find that the mineralogy that they were looking at, especially around these feldspar alteration, um, what we call a vector, is just a really a, a, a way of showing you where to, to go when you're exploring. That this here, initially, um, had enough of copper in it to suggest that it continued on. Um, and they were able to you know, find the cash and the, more so the courage to drill some deeper holes. And, and that deposit was found. Um, and some very, very impressive uh, intersections there with, with, with that, that work. 
Um, but really, I suppose, successful use of this mineral system analysis and, and this early stage mineralogy by them, you know, it, it most importantly, I think it increased what was a, a, a pretty good deposit to something that, that became quite phenomenal with, with the extra new discoveries that were there. Um, just pushing on into, you know, you found your deposit. Where is your ore body? How can you prove you've, you've got something of value? Well, just again for the people in the audience um, who might be, you know, too familiar with a feasibility study, there is a lot of critical inputs into a feasibility study. Um, I'm not going to list them all there, but I just want to focus on the geological again and also start moving into the metallurgical and the testing and the work that has to be done for processing because, again, with all this new mineral information that's coming through, we're, we're able to help metallurgists uh, in a, a much more efficient way uh, in planning and designing mines. One of the, um, I suppose, opening parts around geometallurgy, it's, it's really it's a cross-disciplinary approach where, believe it or not, the geologists will actually talk to the mineralogists mineralogists, <laughs> and the mineralogists will talk to the processing engineers. Um, people say, well, does that not happen already? Well, you know, it, it did, but in a very disjointed way. Um, so now this, I suppose, the fact that we're able to collect more information early, we're able to pass it on, and we're, we're, we're starting to actually add a lot of value at an early stage now into the, the mining processing side. So it, it's all about collecting this, this data early, as early as we can. Again, just going back to um, Geomet and getting everybody talking together, I just want to, again, hone in on the, the fact that at the exploration phase, we are now collecting lots and lots of data. We're getting a huge understanding, um, without constantly repeating it, of the mineralogy. And it's, it's actually bringing this through. It's, it's adding lots and lots of economic value. And it's also reducing the, the technical and economic risk um, uh, that, that's associated with developing a mine. Because if you get the processing plant wrong, it's a massive, massive mistake. And it's, it can lead to disastrous consequences. I suppose traditionally, going back, uh, the metallurgist would come to you after you had proven up the deposit and pretty much um, were able to outline where you thought the best material uh, was uh, in, in, in the deposit, and they'd say, look, just give me a representative bulk sample. That'll do me. I'll, um, I'll run off. I'll do my geostatistical analysis on this, and I'll build a plant, and we'll design it uh, between us and the engineers. Um, and that had led to so many issues and problems, that particular approach. But now we're able to factor in the variability that we're finding in our bodies. Um, we're building these 3D models, as I mentioned, which looks at not just the rock and ore type, but the mineralogy. There might be alteration there that you might have soft rock material, you might have clays, and we're able to bring all that in now at a very, very early stage. Um, and also, this, the sampling that we're doing on the variability is, is really becoming critical for people designing mills, looking at the, the size of the material that they need to grind down, how much energy, another huge consideration on a mining project, you know, the energy you've got to put in to crush rock to get it down to the size so you can liberate the, the ore from it. Just quickly, just, just showing where we're starting to bring in uh, the geomet at, at the early stage. It, it, it's actually around that definition, that scoping phase now. And it's really, really starting to, um, how would I say, get people thinking and, and reducing risk in, in, in their project. Um, so early, the earlier you bring it in, the better you can get your variability testing done and you're constantly trying to reduce that risk factor. Um, and it bring, you can bring it right through actually to the production forecasting. You know where the good mineralogy is that you can focus on. You can build it into your models. You can actually build it into your planning uh, in a big way. And it actually reduces economic risk. This was probably the traditional way that um, people looked at on the processing side with the geometallurgy aspect uh, being brought into it. You know, you'd just have a quick look at the ore body. Um, you know, you do lots of test work around maybe one large bulk sample. Um, you might start to bring in the geology as a second phase, possibly around here. Um, you know, you start putting it into your resource models, into your um, geostatistical analysis, and that, that would kind of push down into actually designing the plant. But what, what, what we're saying, it's, it's really, it needs to be up there. It needs to be very, very early stage. 
and you know you can really start to um, plan efficiently uh, around that. So the, the impact of, of the, the geo in geometallurgy, um, it's really pushing um, right through the value chain now. Um, it's also giving that critical early knowledge that, that I spoke about at the beginning, you know, that we're able to use all this data, all this mineralogy information to help at, at an early stage now. The cost savings are, are phenomenal if people are willing just to, to lay out that little bit more when it comes to the early stage assaying with labs. And um, also, you know, if you're finding uh, sometimes you come across an issue called refractory gold, um, you know, with, with gold projects where the gold is just incredibly hard to uh, extract from the rock. Um, you know, we can actually look at these things at a very, very early stage now. So that's, that's pretty much um, what I've got to, to say this morning. Um, just to let you know that CSA Global, we're, we're not just teams of geologists. We, we also have quite large mining engineering teams. And um, if there's anybody who would like to talk to me further about what um, I've mentioned here this morning, I'll, I'll be around all day. And look forward to chatting. Thanks, Chrissy. Thanks. Thanks to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.